is and you're comparing the same wine in each set of vintages. It really gives you it gives you an opportunity to not only um, you know, to compare different vintages of the same wine, but also to compare different wines within the same vintage. And um, and I've always felt that it really offers one of the richest perspectives that a wine can, uh, can give. Um, we, we had an extraordinary one here in the fall? September. 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 Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was really extraordinary tasting. We did um, same idea, set of set of Barolos, um, and also we had some Barbarescos as well. Yeah. And we, we, did, we followed three three great vintages, 58, 64, and 71. Um, and you know, it was you know, it's a mixture of famous you know famous producers like Giacomo Quinterno and Giuseppe Mascarello, and then also you know relatively unknown producers like like Franco Fiorina and uh, and Odero. And you know, and it's you know, it's a real. There's a lot of discoveries to be made, and you know, one of them was just how extraordinary the the Odero wines were, as well as uh, Franco Fiorina. So we're going to do a similar thing um, uh, tonight. Um, a different set of of, of, of producers. Um, we're repeating one of the vintages, '64, but the idea is to look at the three great great vintages of the 1960s. Uh, which are 61, 64, and 67. Um, and, you know, in the, it's not really equal vintages in any sense. I mean, I think, um, I've always felt that 64 was the great, greatest vintage of the, of the, of the decade. Um, but, it, you know, it, but by the same token, uh, 1967 is a vintage that is, has never gotten the recognition that Deserves, and I, I know except myself. <laughs> um, you know, I think I think you know we it, it may show itself to be the thoroughbred vintage that uh, that John, John John thinks it is. Um, and I won't be surprised if, if that happens. Um, in this one, there's 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 um, it's a little bit more rigorous than the last one because the last one there was a mixture of barbers that said Barresco Barolos. This one we're just doing Barolo. Um, there are no reservas. There are no. Uh, there weren't very many single vineyard Barolos at this at this time, but there were some. But these are all just um, presumably, who's according to the labels, are just straight Barolo from these producers. And uh, you know, I think it'll be it'll be very interesting. Um, there are also some some uh, some, some ringers. Um, uh, the first two flights, um, there's a sixth one, which um, I'm not identifying. Huh. Um, we'll, find it. we'll find out later what Wondered it is. about the glass. Um, curious what you think of it, um, and also what you think it is. <laughs> so we're, we're doing, Capilano is one of the producers in tonight's lineup, and because Capilano makes arguably the greatest Cunato, we'll, we'll have that glass uh, Cunato at the end. Uh, great. Uh, with dessert. Um, uh, for those who, who may not know what, what Barolo Chinato is, it's a um, it's essentially Barolo that's been infused with um, with spices and quinine. And um, the reason why Capilano is famous for uh, for making Chinato is that they're it's actually a family of pharmacists, and uh, so they you know they develop their own recipe. And it's really a, you know, it's a splendid example of it. So, um, one of our special guests tonight is John Gilman. He's, uh, he's been to most of these, if not all of them. Many, uh, yes. Yeah, um, and there's always, I, I love it if you've uh, you know, had some observations sure. now about producers, vintages, and you can also talk with you.